Oh, your mother ha always had Siamese cats, always had Siamese cats, so I guess that's what it is. I think a lot of that comes from just the compassion and, and caring that you're brought up with as far as, you know, feeling that towards animals. When we started looking into rescue, I didn't realize they were the number one purebred turned into shelters. They're uh, euthanized very, very frequently in shelters because they get so stressed in the cages. And they do tend to act either very aggressive or very timid, and so they don't make good adoption candidates. We welcome Siri Wine from your uh, Siamese cat rescue in, in, in Virginia? In Locustdale, Virginia. What I thought was going to be two or three cats in my house while well, I looked for homes turned, turned out to be between 40 and 50 cats at a time. Um, I had met Sari on the internet, on Siamese Internet Cat Club in 1998 when she first started Siamese Rescue. And this was before the shelter was built and there was a cat in every corner. Um, we had dinner with her, slept in her guest room upstairs and as a roommate we had Colopi. Colopi was a seal point that hated everybody. So we spent the night listening to her growl and hiss at us the whole night. And also listening to Nicole, who was in the next room, um, that's Siri's daughter, telling Coffee, who was a cat that was a little bit confused, that everything was all right because he would yowl all night. So it was an interesting night. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. <laughs> this is Coffee, and Coffee is uh, probably about 15 and was found down in the Virginia Beach area. And the shelter sent him up here saying he was about five. And we sort of took one look at him and said, mm, I think they forgot a one. He's more like 15. And we call Clueless Coffee because he's so confused. <laughs> if only they could talk. Maybe make a great book if you could hear what's happened. That's Blue. <laughs> he was just letting you know that he's here and he's the alpha male of the house, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> Hi, guys. Let's see if we can get Cersei's to eat something. This is um, Cersei's, and Cersei's came from a home in Ohio with her sister. She'll be fine as an only cat. She'll be loving and affectionate and nice and normal and all that sort of stuff. She just doesn't like other cats. Hey, Mania. Hey, sweetheart. Well, you sure ate that fast. That's what my bed looks like every night when I try to go to bed. <laughs> I usually start about 5.30 in the morning and usually finish up about midnight every day. I am a volunteer. It doesn't pay except in um, lots of good feelings. Lots of headbutts and purrs and affection from the cats. I am allergic to cats. <laughs> I have to be very careful not to rub my eyes or rub my nose. It wasn't exactly the best career field to go into, and it, I kind of fell into it by mistake. I'm a special ed teacher by training. Decided I was going to do this instead. <laughs> Well, does the phone ring all the time? The phone rings all the time, and there's, you know, two to three hundred emails every day. Computer. Two, did you say two or three hundred mm -hmm. emails mm -hmm. on your email thing every day? Yes. Two or three hundred. Well, you don't need to get any more people interested, it doesn't sound well, like. Well, there's a lot of people wanting to give up cats. Same as rescue. Um, have you visited our website yet? Okay. What you need to you do, do is everything you can and spend every hour you can trying to save the cats, and there's always more. Mm -hmm. We do have fosters all over, uh, mostly up and down the East Coast, so you can only fit so many animals, and there's so many that need homes. Um, the adoption fee is $100 and it includes spay, neuter. You find that it's a real roller coaster. You know, one day you are really happy and excited because you get a great report about a cat or you found a, a wonderful home and, or you've placed a cat that you thought you wouldn't place. Um, and the next day you have a lot of tears because somebody didn't make it. But what we've learned that the highs are always followed by lows and the lows are always followed by highs. This is the vet trip for tomorrow. We have 15 to the vet this week for spay and neuters and your analysis and various other things. If you know there were more people who understood the overpopulation problem, then we wouldn't be 
facing having to euthanize so many animals. Okay, who we forget? Hi, sweetie. Duke comes down every night and gets on the kitchen counter and waits for his milk. Gets a little milk every night. <laughs> He's also the one cat that at one point I had a bourbon pound cake sitting on the kitchen counter and he ate most of it. <laughs> First cat I've ever known that liked bourbon pound cake. Well, someone said to me something about what you're going to do when you re are retired and I said, I am retired. I mean, this is what I'm going to do probably for the rest of my life until I'm too achy to bend down and scoop the litter pans. <laughs> This is Ada, Virginia 146, on the 18-year anniversary of her adoption, June 14th, 1999. She's now 20 years old and going strong, and we love her every day. This is Chillo. He was one of the first cats when Siri was operating from her house, and he was found as a stray roaming the streets of Tennessee. Now he lives in the Washington, D.C. area. The one thing that he eat at this point in his life is, wait for it, McDonald's hamburgers. Um, so they're a health food for somebody, and uh, it's kept him going. It's been eight or nine months. As long as he gives us the feeling that he wants to stay with us and be here, well, McDonald's hamburgers it is. And uh, we're happy for every day that we get from with him. So here he is, one of SCRC's first. Daytona first came into my life as an intake request. Due to his two-week stay in the shelter, he failed to thrive. However, this tiny cat had the biggest personality, and Matt stepped in and nursed him back to health. From the get-go, Daytona was very social. He would always greet people at the door, he walked on a leash, he played fetch, and he would also roll over and play dead on command. We decided to enter him in a show when he was a mascot at the Siamese Rescue retail table. He loved every aspect of the show experience. Daytona's show career lasted 11 years. When we lost him to cancer, the loss was almost unbearable. His unique personality provided us with so many experiences that most cat owners never experience. When we arrived at a show a few months after he had passed away, at the entrance to the show hall was a poster featuring four iconic southern region cats who had passed away in the past year, and that poster included Dayton. a whole lot of green to keep the wolf away and love comes in colors love comes in so many colors love comes in colors love Sandy Rodman found Siri when she came to adopt a cat. Now she's hooked. But it's pretty amazing to to really dedicate your whole life to them. Not many people have that kind of dedication. Come here. Come on. Pearl and Tay Lynn joined the Kelser family two years ago. Well, because I felt if we got cats, we ought to take care of some that were strays. Another positive placement. I found the Virginia Siamese Rescue by going to the Texas Siamese Rescue. I 
looked at all the cats and Siri kept saying, but this one back here is looking at you. This one back here is sticking its paw out wanting you to come back. And I rescued a cat that I later named Metro, which was my heart cat, and she lived to be 20. But since then, I've rescued another cat. Her name is Ella, and she's just a doll. My mother adopted a beautiful lynx cat, and since she got it from Gun Barrel, she named it Gunny. She since adopted one more cat, and that cat was Lexi. And that was the last cat she has adopted from Siamese Rescue. Since 1998, she's helped form a national network of volunteers called the Miser Express. There's probably about a thousand people across the U.S. She's in Virginia. The website is maintained in Utah. Express volunteers transport cats anywhere in the country via car and plane to new owners. Um, I was flying a cat up to Ceres, and it was before we did a lot with Coxidia. I had the little black carrier that fit under the seat, and she was very quiet. As soon as I am boarding the plane, she starts digging and meowing like crazy in the carrier. And then the smell. And I head right back to the restroom of the airplane, the small little two-foot square bathroom, and I peek in the carrier, and she bolts out of the carrier carrying with her coccidia poop that is now on the ceiling, on the floor, on the toilet, on the sink, and a big pile in the carrier. The flight attendant is beating on the door telling me I must take my seat. And I beg her for a trash bag and I scoop everything out of the carrier stuff Pepper back in the carrier and stuff all the trash in the trash bag and hand it to the flight attendant. And I take the seat right outside the toilet. And everybody is silent on the plane because the odor has just circled through all of the vents. And she put a big sign on the restroom out of order. So as soon as we get in the air, I beg her to let me back in. And I go in and I just cannot believe how much poop is everywhere on the plane. And I'm washing the ceiling and the walls and the toilet seat. Get that all clean and I sat on the toilet seat for the rest of the flight. As we land and we're walking out the jetway, still no one is looking at me. Well, we get up to Ceres. Rose and I did some uh, volunteer work up there and I was about to leave and Ceres said, Oh, so-and-so just got adopted in Charlotte. Will you take this cat back with you on the plane? <laughs> I still don't know if I got all the poop out of all the crevices on that plane because I've just never seen so much poop everywhere. <laughs> we had found Siamese Rescue while trying to find a companion for our seal point, Kiki. So we contacted our interviewer, who happened to be Siri. Siri emailed me a few photos of a, and a bio of a cat that was about to come in the program. Her name was Princess Eve and would we be interested? The Tuesday before Thanksgiving, I get this email from Siri with the subject line of major embarrassment. When Siri took Princess Eve to, the, to Dr. Reinhold Pfaff for her initial exam, he said something along the lines of, this cat has never been spayed. He, <clears throat> however, has been neutered. And that Princess Eve was now Prince Adam. This was one of the first visits by the gender change fairy that I'm aware of anyway. He is now named Muir, and he has been with us for over 12 years and is now an elder statesman cat. <clears throat> He's very friendly, very outgoing, but kind of dim. When I think of Siamese cats, I think of, uh, I think it's the Disney movie, um, <laughs> Lady and the Tramp. Cyan Am. <laughs> okay, and, and, and they just seem like really mischievous cats. Is that uh, Well, they're very true? intelligent. They are just like those two cats. I'm sure they could take care of any puppy in the house. <laughs> But Disney gave them a bad name. They're actually very, uh, very much like dogs mm -hmm. in that they need a lot of human interaction. Different, different look there. 
<laughs> wow. We'll keep Chevy right over there by you. Well, that's oh. right. Chevy doesn't. Chevy needs to be an only cat. Okay. And is this a good cat to to get when you have a family, or is it better off with with very someone much who doesn't so. have children? Very good much so. Cat? They're very good with children, and um, they're just wonderful pets. They're mm -hmm. wonderful pets. They're very very people dependent. You know, most people think that cats are aloof and independent. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the Siamese cat requires a lot of attention. A lot of attention. <laughs> Chevy. <laughs> Chevy, you're giving us a bad name. No. This Madison County, Virginia garage is home to one of three Siamese yeah, cat rescue too. centers in the United States. Siri Wine and Daryl Zwimke get help from thousands of volunteers across the country who monitor animal shelters and stay in touch through phones and pagers and the internet. It speeds up the process of finding homes for the Siamese cats, also known as beezers. Because we can um, send and receive agreements within seconds because we can send information and pictures of the cats within seconds. Um, it, it, we place so fast. We place, you know, 30 to 50 cats a month. The rescued animals spend a week or so here being nursed back to health, fed, spruced up a bit before being put up for adoption. Sometimes that will cost several hundred dollars. The rescue center charges 100 for the animal. Many of the older cats can't be placed and become permanent residents. All of the food, kitty litter, and supplies are donated. Email on their website, SiameseRescue.org, tie the rescue operation together. It has forms for adoption, ways to donate or buy souvenir items, and of course, pictures of the cats. They can see the cats uh, as they come online. It's amazing, too, to see now is we'll put a cat up for adoption. People will call, like, in five minutes, they'll start calling, you know, say, oh, I see you have a new cat. They will save about 400 Siamese cats this year. Siri has been on the phone with a volunteer who'd been working since midnight okay, to save two right. cats from a Howard County, Maryland Thank shelter. You. She was successful. In a few hours, the two will join the others at the center, resting, playing, waiting for a new owner to be approved. Better here than at the shelter. Is this really time sensitive? Yes. It is very time sensitive. Sure. Many times you have only about 24 hours because the shelter is so full they only have 24 hours for you to either get there and get the cat or they, they need to euthanize it. Some of the animals need medicine, we need we transportation, need, uh, so the very, phone very rings constantly. Them. More cats have been rescued. Someone else wants to adopt. There is a webcam. Soon Daryl and Siri will be talking to prospective families while showing the cat live on the internet. Just one way technology is connecting people of like interests, in this case, helping save animals. How can you do all this cat work and computer work? Where's your exercise coming from? Where's your all that fresh air and everything? Well, I don't know about the fresh air, but I do a lot of scooping litter boxes and stuff. It's oh, good exercise. Isn't that awful? <laughs> it's a mystery to me, though. I'm not all that cat interested. And, and of course, you know, I lived at Grey Gardens for quite a while, and I think they had about 40 cats. But they were all kinds of cats, and I, they stayed out of my room and where I was going, because I'm not a cat person. Where you get all this cat business? The veals would have loved you. My goodness, the doors would have been thrown open. <laughs> A bad boy. You want to say, I'm, I'll probably put this on Facebook if it'll let me. You want to say hello to Kathy? Nah, I don't want to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are at 20 years into Siamese Rescue, and we wanted to take a moment to um, stop and thank and acknowledge all the volunteers, supporters, adopters, um, cats, everybody who's made this such a fantastic success. You're going to thank the cats? Yeah, <laughs> the cats too. We just couldn't have done it without everybody. Um, you guys have all become uh, a family as well as um, a team. So thank you for everything you've done.
you be 